When you're getting into birding, most people are gonna tell you that you need a pair of these binoculars. Now there's a little bit that you need to know about choosing the right pair of binoculars and kind of the differences and the different looks, the different prices, so let's break it all down. My name's Derek and I've been birding for 10 years, so here's everything you need to know about choosing the right binoculars. So first of all, let's look at these two pairs. You'll notice that they have differences in shape. So these are called poroprism binoculars. And what that means is that there's actually two prisms in here where the light is reflecting and then bouncing off the other one and it creates this zigzag shape. So these are kind of more, I don't know, back in the day, traditionally what you would see with the look of binoculars, this kind of bigger bulky shape. So that's poro prism. Another big one you'll encounter is roof prism. And these are gonna be more your straight looking binoculars. They have that prism system that just goes right through. Poro prism binoculars are normally a lot cheaper to produce. So you can get a high quality pair of poro prism binoculars for a cheaper price than a high quality pair of roof prisms normally. Now in general, some benefits of the poro prism design is that you can get a wider field of view normally. Uh, some negatives is that they're a little more bulky and that they can be a little more fragile. So when I turn the focus wheel, you'll see that this zooms in and out to focus here. And that can cause a little bit of issues if something happens here. Like I had a pair of Poro Prism binoculars that I dropped and it slammed one of the sides down and then it wasn't able to really focus. So that, that's a bit of a downside, they're bulkier. For beginners, they're nice because it's, it's a lot to hold on to. The roof prisms normally have a little more clarity, but like I said, they're a little more expensive normally. So those are the main two styles you're gonna run into when looking at binoculars. So let's move on to kind of the basics of how to use a pair of binoculars. Most of them will have some kind of coating on the outside. They'll have a focus wheel in the middle, and then a lot of times they'll have a diopter. So the idea behind the diopter is it's only on one of the eyes, and that's because people have differences in vision. So you want to adjust the focus wheel for your one eye, and then the diopter for the other eye so that it's creating one picture. Something I had to adjust to because I would normally bird with a camera is you're not really zooming in and out, you're just bam on a bird right away and then you focus it. And this can take a little bit of skill to kind of get used to putting those binoculars up where the bird is and it can be a little difficult to do at first if you're not used to it but it is something you get better at. One thing I really like to use binoculars for is just scanning because a lot of the times when we're filming for our channel we're after media so I'm using my camera to bird but uh, I use binoculars a lot on tours. So there's big flocks, I can just scan quickly, look for what I wanna see and then point it out to the people on our tour or point it out so you know somebody else can get media of it or then I switch to the camera and use it. Uh, one downside is if you do want media and your first looks with the binoculars, then you might miss that chance to get that media. So a lot of the times I'll actually use the camera when I'm getting more into the binoculars just for quick scans. Like if you're doing a lot of work to try to pick through birds, uh, this is definitely the way to go because you can just go super quick. Additionally, a lot of binoculars will have a tripod attachment. So here it's right in the middle and you can unscrew that and then you actually need like an adapter to put on so it'll make your binoculars still on the tripod. I don't really find that that useful because a lot of times you want these kind of, you know, ready to go wherever you're going to look. So it's kind of blocky to put them on a tripod. You're almost using them more like a scope then. Uh, so I don't really necessarily find a ton of value for that. And there's also things you could put on your binoculars to digiscope photos, like little adapters that then you can put your phone on and take a photo or different camera setups as well. So with binoculars, you'll see the two numbers, the first one and then X and then the second one. The first one is your magnification. So if it's eight by 42, it'll be eight times magnification. And 42 is the diameter size of the objective lens. So how wide this is. So if you have a bigger objective lens, normally that'll let more light in. With the amount of magnification, that first number, such as eight by 42, which is pretty much the standard for burning. Sometimes you'll see 10 by 50, different things like that. Um, Sometimes people like a lower number because it gives them a wider field of view. So if you have an 8x42, you're going to be less magnified and you'll see more of the surrounding area than like a 10x50. In some cases, I've seen people have binoculars that are too magnified, so it'll be really hard to find this specific bird and sometimes people want a wider field of view. So that's definitely something to consider too. 
Now let's move on to what makes a pair of binoculars good or not. So there are a couple of things you're going to want to look for in a really high quality pair of binoculars. One is ED glass, and that means extra low dispersion. So that's going to let as much light in as possible and make a really clear picture. Some companies say they have HD glass, high definition, and this can be a little misleading because sometimes it's whatever the company wants it to mean. Oh, it's high definition glass. So sometimes it's HD. Uh, and it's still ED glass, but you got to be careful, kind of read the fine print to see what it actually means. HD can also stand for high density, so you got to do a little research if a company just says they have HD glass. But normally if it says ED, that's very good. Also, multi-coated optics. So the glass inside and the prism, sometimes they'll have different coatings on that, and there are different levels of this, so sometimes it'll say like fully multi-coated or just multi-coated or it'll have different levels. So get some more info about that before you purchase and kind of dive a little deeper into what's all coded. In general, it seems like the more things that are coded, the better your picture quality is gonna be. It also helps let light in and reduce something called chromatic aberration. So chromatic aberration is if you have lower quality glass, it'll have kind of a purple or blue tinge to it when you're looking out at something that's kind of far away. And with the multi-coated optics or the fully coated optics and the ED glass, it'll reduce that chromatic aberration and let in as much light as possible. So most optics, even if they're super, super high quality, will show some chromatic aberration in specific conditions, but you wanna reduce this as much as possible. Also, you want something with a bit of eye relief. So eye relief is so you can move the eye cups in or out, some turn and twist, others fold, Either one is really fine, but you want something that you can adjust, especially if you're uh, someone who wears glasses. So that can change you know, how close you are to the lens itself and it'll make a big difference. So you want something with eye relief. Another thing to think about is weight. So if you're a little bit older, you're probably not gonna want something that's super heavy out in the field. So do check the weight and just kind of see if that's gonna be something that you're gonna wanna carry around all the time. These are pretty compact. Uh, these are pretty light too. So I haven't run into too many binoculars that are super heavy. Also, I really like binoculars that are waterproof. I had some issues with uh, water getting into binoculars and then fogging up. And so I was trying to burn in the rain and I couldn't, couldn't really see and things got a little little tough. So I think that you should look for binoculars that are waterproof. Now at the end of the day, you can get decent binoculars for a pretty affordable price. This pair, this is the Bruginius 10 by 50. I think you can get it on Amazon between like 10 and 50 bucks. And I've used these for tours. Um, they've done what I need them to do. A uh, couple things is I have had, you know, water get into these, but you don't necessarily need something crazy expensive to just get the job done. So really, if you have just a pair laying around or your family has a pair lay laying around or your friend lets you borrow one, that's really all you need to get started. As long as you have something that gets you a little closer to the birds, that's really what you want to start out. And then once you get more used to it, you can look for something a little more expensive. Uh, this is the Oberwerk 8x42 Sport ED binoculars. I really like these. They go for about 350 Did a full review that you can check out. Diamondback HD binoculars. I really liked as well by Vortex. I think you can get those for around 200 bucks. I also did a full review of those. And certain companies will also have different warranties. So this Oberwerk pair has a two-year warranty. Vortex Optics, they have a lifetime warranty. So if anything happens to them and you have a product with their name on it, you can send it back and they'll send you a new pair or fix it for you. So that's a really great value. And when you're buying a high-end pair of binoculars, you really have to think about it as an investment because if you're birding a lot, this is probably something you're gonna be using all the time. But like I said, to get into it, you really don't need anything super expensive. You can just kind of use what you have laying around or get a pair that's you know, not that expensive and just kind of get started. There's tons of great binocular brands out there. I, uh, Vortex is really great. We actually toured their facility. The Overwork binoculars I've really liked. Uh, Leica, Zeiss, Swarovski is super high end. So they're a little expensive, normally out of the price range of most birders, but if you can afford Swarovski stuff, it's really good. Uh, just tons of different ones you can pick from. So as long as you look for those factors that we talked about, you'll be off to a good start. As far as storage for binoculars, something you can do is keep them in a plastic bag with like a desiccant in there to absorb moisture. You don't want them in high humidity or high dust environments. I wouldn't recommend leaving them like a hot or really cold car either. So you want to try to be absorbing as much of that moisture as possible and avoiding a high humidity environment. 
Uh, we hope you found this video helpful. We do have links in the description to some of these different products for you to check out. If you have any other beginner tips for using binoculars, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Thank you.